What's up everyone? This is Corey from The Overlook and we go over the books you may have overlooked. Long story short, this story takes place after Scarlet Witch says no more mutants. With the MCU introducing Wanda's kids, the new Hawkeye, and Scott Lang's daughter, I think now is a better time than ever to do this story. So, I hope you all enjoy it. In the beginning, nobody knew what to make of them. Seven super-powered Avengers fans who only came together because the Avengers themselves had fallen apart. Since then, they fought Kang the Conqueror, a superhero civil war, a secret invasion of Earth, and a siege on Asgard. So, you think maybe the Avengers would trust them by now, but they're still fighting to prove they're worthy of being called Young Avengers, even if it kills them. Cassie Lang's father was the microscopic Ant-Man. After his death, Cassie used her father's pin particles to follow in his footsteps as the size-changing stature. Vision is the latest iteration of the android Avenger who can manipulate his own density and whose synthesoid soul makes him every bit as human as the rest of them. Eli Bradley's grandfather was the original Captain America. A third generation super soldier, Eli continues to fight for peace as Patriot. Former New York Society debutante Kate Bishop so impressed Captain America on the battlefield that he gave her Clint Barton's bow and dubbed her the new Hawkeye. Tommy Shepard has super speed, white hair, and a criminal past, all of which he shares with the former Avenger Quicksilver. For obvious reasons, he's called Speed. He also happens to look exactly like Billy Kaplan, the hero known as Wiccan, which, in addition to Billy having magic powers, makes him believe that they might actually be the long-lost twins of Quicksilver's sister, the Scarlet Witch. Lastly, the super-strong, shape-shifting Teddy Altman is the son of the Kree Captain Marvel and a scroll. Like his late father, Teddy protects the planet as Hulkling. He is also Billy's boyfriend. Currently, the young heroes are battling in the middle of Manhattan against the Sons of the Serpent, a paramilitary sect devoted to maintaining racial and moral purity. So, naturally, they aren't fans of the Young Avengers. The battle goes on for some time, long enough to attract the attention of Miss Marvel, Iron Man, and Captain America. As the veteran heroes arrive, one of the Sons of the Serpent is able to get the drop on an unexpected Hulkling. The veteran Avengers demand that the Serpent release his Hulkling, but the Extremist threatens the heroes with a bomb. The Extremist tells everyone that he has a weapon as strong as a nuclear bomb strapped to his back. This deeply angers Wiccan and he gives the Serpent one chance to release Hulkling. He doesn't. Instead, the extremist prepares to sacrifice everything and take the sinners with him. A flash of white light consumes the area and it brings all the heroes, even the veteran Avengers, to the ground in a daze. One by one, the Avengers pick themselves up in confusion. If a nuke really had gone off, they would all be dead. So what happened? Before long, they realize it was Wiccan. Later, in the Young Avengers headquarters, which happens to be an open loft with a number of additions added by Vision, all the heroes try to rationalize what just happened. Did I kill those men? Asks Wiccan. Iron Man explains to Billy, that all the Sons of the Serpent were rendered comatose. He just spoke with the hospital and they say a few of them are waking up now, but none of them know what happened. Billy explains, neither does he. 
One minute, we were fighting the Sons of the Serpent, and the next. Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, explains to Billy that he put all his enemies in a coma with a single thought. At the moment, no one knows what Wiccan is capable of, and that's dangerous because they don't want another Scarlet Witch on their hands. What is that supposed to mean? Wiccan snaps back. Ms. Marvel looks at Iron Man and says, Tell him, Tony. He should know. Carol. Iron Man begins before taking a deep sigh. Fine. He produces a projection for all to see. The Scarlet Witch has the power to alter reality, which makes her the most powerful and dangerous entity in the known universe. She blamed the Avengers for the loss of her sons and lashed out at us, losing control of her powers and causing the deaths of the original Vision, Hawkeye, and Cassie's dad, Ant-Man. Her father, Magneto, and her brother, Quicksilver, took her to an island of Genosha to help her recover. But, fearing for his sister's safety, Quicksilver persuaded Wanda to use her powers to transform the world into one where Magneto and his family reigned supreme. Until those of us who were able to remember our former lives fought to reclaim it. Devastated by the bloodshed by her own family in the name of mutant kind, the Scarlet Witch cast one last spell. No more mutants robbing over a million mutants of their powers and committing what some consider mutant genocide. Billy quickly puts two and two together, rhetorically asking, and you think I have the power to do something like that? Because you believe Tommy and I are the sons of the Scarlet Witch. Here we go, Speed whispers, rolling his eyes. Tommy has doubts, but how else could you explain a speedster in a witch named Thomas and William, who could be twins, if we can only find her? Iron Man explains that Scarlet Witch disappeared when the world of M disappeared. They haven't seen her since. But Billy asked the Avengers if they were able to find out who was really responsible, because he has his doubts. The Scarlet Witch was responsible, Captain America tells him flatly. That's impossible, Wiccan defends. Someone else had to be controlling her. The Scarlet Witch was an Avenger. The Scarlet Witch was a murderer, interrupts Miss Marvel. She murdered her teammates. She wiped out an entire race. She was Magneto's daughter to the end. Wiccan turns his back on the Avengers. It begins to walk away. The Avengers have already made up their minds. They aren't even willing to give the Scarlet Witch the benefit of the doubt, even after years of fighting by their side. So what will they do to him if he does turn out to be just like her? Billy tells them all, I appreciate your concern, but I won't be staying for your evaluation. The young Avengers follow after Billy, and they all fly away. After an awkward few minutes of silence, Hulkling asks, Can we talk about the fact that you just walked out on the Avengers? I did not. I walked out on Cap and Iron Man, and like I said, they were going to take me prisoner. They were going to take your temperature. You think? I think. Oh my god, I just walked out on the Avengers! Speed tries to lighten the mood by asking, Why is that a bad thing? Earth's mightiest heroes are afraid of you. That's how powerful you are. By walking out, you probably earn their respect. Even I'm hating you a little less than usual. Thanks, Tommy. That means a lot. Now. Would anyone other than the team sociopath care to weigh in on this? Guys? Hawkeye and Patriot both try to explain to Billy that he took out 20 guys with guns and nukes by himself 
and he doesn't even remember doing it. He could have really hurt people. He lost control. So you think the Avengers are right about this? Billy flies away with Hulkling calling after him. Can we please talk about this like the mature semi-adult superheroes we want the Avengers to think we are? Billy tells the team that he has had enough Avengers for one day. He's going home to think about it himself. This is his problem after all, not theirs. Billy transforms into his street clothes and walks up to his front door before swinging it open to find none other than Captain America speaking to his parents. He explains the situation to Billy's mom and dad and they both agree to have Billy stay under the Avengers supervision for now. His whole life, Billy dreamed that one day Captain America would show up and ask him to move in with the Avengers. So it's true what they say. Be careful what you wish for. Both Billy and Captain America prepare to leave and Captain America explains, it's just until we get a sense of what you're capable of. Are you seriously trying to hail us a cab right now? Unless you'd rather take the subway because unlike Iron Man, I can't fly. Billy waves his hands both transforming him into his costume and lifting Captain America into the air, stating, this is one thing I'm capable of, unless you'd rather take the subway. Are you kidding? This is so much better than riding on Iron Man's boot. Come on, I'll race you. As they fly over to the base, Billy asks Captain America what he really thinks happened to the Scarlet Witch. If he saw any signs at all that she was capable of hurting her own teammates. Cap says never. But losing a child, losing two children, changes you. That's something you never recover from. But I don't think she has lost her kids. Billy, I just met your biological parents. Not biological, sons. I'm talking about transmigration of souls. Captain America warns Billy that having a connection to Wanda Maximoff is not going to win Billy any friends when they get to the Avengers mansion. Did you guys even consider that she might be innocent? I was there. She's not innocent. But do you know she wasn't possessed? Doctor Strange would have detected it. I heard Doctor Strange's powers aren't what they used to be. You think you're more powerful than Doctor Strange? I guess that's what we're going to find out. At that moment, Hulkling intercepts the two on their journey, stating that they aren't going anywhere without him. Captain, I understand you're concerned about Billy, but if anything happens to him, your primary concern should be me. Billy and I are partners. Where he goes, I go. And if you have a problem with that, Captain America flies past Teddy and continues towards the mansion. I have no problem with that. In fact, I'll have Jarvis prepare you a room. They all arrive at the mansion and the two boys are escorted to their room, which happens to look more similar to a holding cell with a single standing light left to illuminate the area. It's just lacking a little magic, that's all, Billy says as he transforms the room into a hotel suite. With a moment of privacy, Billy and Teddy decide that, with nothing else to do, maybe they can use this time to make out, if Billy could just stop talking for a second. But before they can have a moment to themselves, Speed phases through the wall and asks, What the hell are you idiots doing? I go to all the trouble to rescue you, and you two are here making out? You're prisoners. Prisoners don't stand around making out with each other, do they? Vision follows shortly after and tells the others that he can only disrupt the alarm system for so long 
before the Avengers notice. Speed turns to Wiccan and asks, Billy, can you magic us out? I guess if you could, you wouldn't be here, right? No problem, hang tight. I'm going to accelerate our collective molecules fast enough to vibrate through that wall. Ideally, without either of you becoming unstable and exploding in the process. They arrive outside, and Tommy is surprised to see the other young Avengers standing there waiting to greet him. Hawkeye explains that they're a family. No matter what scary, unstoppable powers Billy may have. Plus, Patriot adds, if you do have scary, unstoppable powers, we're thinking we should probably be on your side. They are hoping that it doesn't come to it, but if it does, they are willing to fight the Avengers to defend him. Billy is touched by the sentiment but asks for the rest of the team to break him back in. The situation is complicated, and he really doesn't have any other choice. You could find the Scarlet Witch, Stature says softly. Think about it. Billy's not the problem. The problem is Wanda Maximoff. She's the one who lost her mind. She's the one who made mutants an endangered species. She's the one who murdered my dad. And when did she do all that? Because she thought she lost her kids. So if we show her that her sons are alive and well, she can undo all of it. She can reverse the spell, give the mutants back their powers, and she can bring my dad back to life. Tears begin to form in Cassie's eyes, and Vision places a hand on her shoulder, explaining, Cassie, I know how much you miss your father, but... Vision, she already brought Wonder Man back from the dead, and Clint Barton, so why not my dad? If we really are a family, we should at least try. For Billy's sake. Suddenly... The team is interrupted by a voice from above, telling them, My sentiments exactly, child. Which is why I think it's time you boys met your grandfather, Magneto. The young Avengers look up into the air, overwhelmed by the presence of Magneto. Even he claims that Billy and Tommy are his family. One way or another, he is their grandfather. He offers to take both Billy and Tommy away, stating that they have much to discuss. It only takes a couple of seconds for the twins to realize that this wasn't a request. Magneto scoops up the two in an electromagnetic bubble and begins to fly away. At once, Stature grows in size and tries to grab a hold of the bubble within her two hands. Vision begins to analyze the magnetic structure and Hulklink attempts to reason with Magneto. Fearing for his life, he flies in front of the terrorist, cutting him off and says, At the risk of you killing me with a single glance, sir, they're not going anywhere with you. Magneto tells Hulklink, that the twins will ultimately have to go with him. That is, if they want to see their mother. Billy phases out of the bubble to tell his grandfather that they have already been to Transnia and the Scarlet Witch wasn't there. Magneto disagrees. He believes that if Thomas and William are his grandsons, they are the only connection he has left to his daughter which makes them the key to finding her. Patriot is the most apprehensive of the bunch followed by Hawkeye as a close second, which is fine, states Magneto. He doesn't recall inviting them in the first place. But if they must know, what happened to Wanda is his fault and his alone. All he seeks now is an opportunity 
to restore balance and mutant kind in the process. At that moment, a repulsor blast is shot from afar and barely misses Magneto. All the young Avengers jump back to look at the skyline to find the Avengers swarming in on them. Iron Man fires another repulsor blast at Magneto, but Magneto blocks the blast with a barrier and begins to levitate in the air. Stature begins to grow even larger in a desperate attempt to scoop up her friends and protect them, but the young Avengers are already jumping around in every direction. Wolverine yells from a rooftop, I warned you to stay away from the kids, Eric. Magneto responds, Logan, stop this before someone gets hurt. By someone, of course, I mean you. Magneto creates another bubble and drags all of the Young Avengers into it before Stature grabs the barrier for safekeeping. Meanwhile, Iron Man continues to fire off repulsor blasts. With Magneto occupied, a number of them make contact. Stark, listen! Magneto begins before Wiccan once again phases through the protective bubble in order to conjure up a more powerful barrier to protect his grandfather. He explains to the Avengers that Magneto only wants to help. The Scarlet Witch is his daughter and an Avenger, so why can't everyone work together? Magneto explains to Wiccan that it is because the Avengers don't want to find Wanda. They want to kill her. And the minute Wiccan steps out of line, they will kill him too. I couldn't have said it better myself. Wolverine snarls as he jumps off a building and tackles Wiccan out of the air. Magneto pushes Wolverine off of Wiccan and thanks him. Wiccan should understand who his allies are now. Hulkling swoops in and lifts Wiccan off the ground before attempting to fly away from the chaos. Spider-Man cuts off the teens and tries to reason with them. He is the original teen hero, after all. Hulkling speeds past the web slinger and is cut off once again, this time by Miss Marvel, telling the two to look back at everything they started. Hulkling and Wiccan stop for a second to absorb what is actually happening. It's hero versus hero down there. There are no winners in this kind of battle. We have to stop this, Wiccan tells Hulkling, by finding the Scarlet Witch. I don't think the Avengers will approve. I don't think I care. Brace yourself. Billy's eyes begin to glow blue, and within an instant, a massive bolt of lightning strikes the ground. The collision from the bolt causes a massive pushback of energy that throws all the Avengers off their feet and away from the epicenter. When they regain their bearings, they can't help but wonder, what just happened? Wolverine grunts, it's official. Wanda Jr.'s getting on my nerves. Miss Marvel motions that they call Doctor Strange to help with the situation. And then what? Luke Cage asks. Declare war on the young Avengers? They haven't done anything wrong. They've allied themselves with a known mutant terrorist. He's their grandfather. You don't actually believe that, do you? Wolverine stops the back and forth from Carol and Luke by saying the next step is simple. They just wait for Wanda Jr. to find the witch for them, and then they'll take them both out. Elsewhere, the young Avengers and Magneto touch down on an open field on the side of a hill overlooking a small village. Where are we? Kate Bishop asks, clearly confused. Wondagore Mountain in Transnia, Magneto tells her, the birthplace of the Scarlet Witch. Hawkeye turns on her heels and looks back at Wicked. Billy Kaplan, did you just magic us halfway around the world? 
He just made us all fugitives, is what he did. Patriot steps forward to speak his part. Thanks to Billy, we just teamed up with Magneto, fought the Avengers, and fled the country. We're not the Young Avengers anymore. We're the Young Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. You're a mutant? Magneto asks, genuinely curious. That's not the point. The point is, Billy should have asked us first. Tears start forming in Billy's eyes as he tells everyone that Patriot is right. He attempts to send the team back home, but Hawkeye is the first to stop him. We're a team, she tells him. Billy uses his magic to make the team a little less conspicuous, and they all begin to make their way to the small town at the base of the mountain. Magneto believes Wanda may reside there, at the base of Mount Wondagore, where she was born. This is where her power is the strongest. Presumably, if they do share a connection, the same should be true for Wiccan. Both Patriot and Hawkeye slow their pace in order to speak in private. Patriot believes that he has found a like mind, but Hawkeye warns him, at the end of the day, they are a team. She's backing Billy, and Patriot can ask to go home at any time. More towards the center of the group, Cassie notices that Vision is being unusually quiet. Vision is apprehensive at first, but finally lets Cassie know what is on his mind. Albeit, he is a synthesoid, so he has little perspective on magic. But he does know magic comes with a cost. And if the Scarlet Witch is able to bring Cassie's father, Scott Lang, back to life, Vision is afraid of what the cost will be. He knows that Cassie would do anything for her father. He also knows that her father would not want to live in a world without her in it, and neither would he. Magneto brings the children to a graveyard just outside the village. He walks up to the grave with the name Magda carved onto it and, for the first time, introduces the kids to their grandmother. Magda left me when I, like Wanda, lost control of my powers, causing the deaths of those who persecuted us. Nine months later, she found asylum here on Wondagore Mountain and gave birth to Wanda and Pietro. I didn't even know she was pregnant. When Magda died, the twins were raised by a Roma couple, Django and Maria Maximoff until their mutant abilities emerged. And they provoked violence in those who didn't understand them. So I became their champion and protector. Unaware of our blood tie, they joined my mutant brotherhood as the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver until my zealotry drove them away too, just as it had their mother now, my daughter has vanished. My son wants to kill me. And I can't say I blame either of them. I have behaved unconsciously towards my family, taking for granted my very relationships I should have prized above all. Magneto places his hands on the grandson's shoulders, stating, I promise not to make the same mistake with you. You are my last hope of bringing my family back together and healing the wounds that have caused so many mutants and humans so much pain. So how do we do that? Billy asks. You're the mage, William. I was hoping you would tell me. A blue light shines on the three of them and their clothes transform back into their costumes. Billy wonders, 
Maybe if we joined hands and, I don't know, reached out with our feelings? Billy holds his hand out, and Tommy reels back, stating, I don't have feelings, and I don't hold hands. Magneto holds his hand out to Tommy, warning him, Careful, lad, or you'll end up like me. I should be so lucky, Tommy responds, taking the warning more as a compliment. And I have a new favorite grandson. Magneto smiles back as Tommy grabs his hand. Billy begins to cast his magic. Don't count me out yet. Now, close your eyes, clear your minds, and let's try to focus on the Scarlet Witch. She's here in the village square. It feels like her. It must be her. At once, Speed races off to search the village. Wiccan calls after him. Tommy, wait! Why? You afraid I'll be the Scarlet Witch's favorite too? Don't worry. I'll be back in a flash. Suddenly, Speed slides to a stop. He stands there, once again in awe of what he would consider mutant royalty. The man tells Speed, The name is Quicksilver, and if you and your friends don't leave this place at once, my father won't be the only person I kill today. Magneto and the Young Avengers catch up, Magneto telling Speed, Thomas, I see you've met your uncle, Pietro. Allow me to introduce, I know who they are, father, and... Having seen Wiccan's exploits on the evening news, I know why you've taken such a suddenly grandfatherly interest in them. But if you don't release these children and leave my sister alone, I promise you, the Avengers and the X-Men will join forces and... You know where your sister is, Magneto interrupts. No. Quicksilver says flatly, before speeding off with Wiccan. Uh, this is not how I was hoping we'd meet, Wiccan sighs. The feeling is mutual, I assure you. You do know it's pointless to kidnap me, right? I'm not kidnapping you. I'm saving you from my father. I'm taking you out of his clutches, out of harm's way. You should feel free to thank me at any point. It's not that I'm not grateful. It's just, if I wanted to get away from your father, I would have just done it magically. With magic. I see. Just as you will when you decide it's time to get away from me. Unless you want to turn around and go back. Because there's no reason why we can't all work together. Oh... But there is, Pietro corrects Wiccan. There's my father. However, Pietro sneers, there's no reason the two of us can't work together. The conversation is interrupted by the appearance of Speed, catching up to his uncle and brother, stating, Oh, but there is. There's me. And I have to say, I'm a little offended that you didn't kidnap both of us. After all, you and I have so much in common, Uncle Pete. The super speed, the brooding bad boy thing, the weird white-headedness. Though, I suppose it must be a blow to the old ego, knowing there's a version of you out there that's younger, better looking, and faster. If it's a race you want, nephew, then it's a race you shall have. Pietro sprints forward with Billy still on his shoulder until their race is interrupted by yet another unexpected intervention. Magneto uses his power to pull the soil of the very earth up from under Quicksilver's feet. Damn, he curses. My father's power appears to be stronger than ever, even at this distance. The man doesn't age. Speed ignores the intervention and cheers off at his victory. 
annoying both Billy and Pietro. Wiccan tries to convince his uncle that Magneto's heart is in the right place, and Quicksilver replies, Nephew, the last time I allowed myself to believe that, my father tried to kill me. Quicksilver races back to the village square with speed following after, generously offering his uncle a rematch to their race. But Quicksilver is too busy prying off wooden stakes lining a nearby fence. Pietro rockets the stakes off in the direction of Magneto. Currently, Magneto is unaware, his attention being drawn to a familiar-faced woman in a black cloak. Wanda? He asks as the wooden weapons begin to rain from the sky. Patriot is the first to see the attack. He lifts his shield to block Magneto and tells everyone to get down. Magneto tries to approach the familiar woman and is almost hit by a wooden stake, if not for Patriot pushing Magneto out of the way once again. The stake that would have hit Magneto instead hits the woman and Magneto calls out for her. At the sound of his sister's name, Quicksilver races to see the damage he's done. To his surprise, the woman, whom he thought to be his sister, lay there on the floor twitching in the dirt. Where there should be a puddle of blood, there's nothing. Frayed wires dance around the hole in the woman's abdomen. Smoke begins to rise from the woman's mouth and her metal faceplate falls off. She's a robot, Quicksilver mutters. But she isn't just a robot. The group finds out she's a Doombot. They conclude that the reason no one has been able to find the Scarlet Witch is because she's a prisoner of Doctor Doom. Within a small village at the base of Wondagore Mountain, there is an inn. Within that inn, the Young Avengers, Quicksilver, and Magneto stand over the now dead Doombot masquerading as the Scarlet Witch. Quicksilver still isn't convinced that this is Doctor Doom's doing. He claims that Magneto and Doom have been rivals for years. And what better way to motivate an invasion on Latveria than convincing Wanda's children that Doctor Doom is holding her captive? Magneto tells Quicksilver to judge for himself before lifting the Doombot and deconstructing it for his son to see. Who but Doom has the technology to create such a device? And who but Doom has the power to make it seem as if Wanda simply disappeared, leaving no trace of her or her magics? Like both William and Thomas, Victor Von Doom lost his mother at an early age. Like your mother, Magneto says to Quicksilver, Cynthia Von Doom practiced witchcraft to fight for the lives and rights of others. But in the end, she lost the fight. Her life and her eternal soul. Already a gifted scientist, Victor turned his attention to the mystic arts to reclaim his mother's soul. That is, until his efforts to combine science and magic backfired burning him in the same fires that consumed his mother, and damning him to live the rest of his life as Dr. Doom, the self-proclaimed king of Latveria, the master of science and magic, and the most powerful man alive. The only person more powerful than Doom is your sister, Pietro. Wanda possesses the unique ability to transform reality to suit her whim. So whoever controls Wanda controls the fabric of existence, as you well know, my son. Pietro still isn't convinced 
He reasons that if Doctor Doom already had Wanda, they would all be mindless drones doing Doom's bidding. However, Magneto poses the question, how do they know they already aren't? He believes that between the nine of them, they make a rather formidable search and rescue team. Quicksilver outright denies Magneto's invitation and Patriot also raises his hand in disapproval. Almost everyone agrees, that is, except for Wiccan. Patriot doubles down on how much of a bad idea it is to not only team up with a known mutant terrorist, but to potentially risk starting a world war by invading Latveria. Wiccan is of the same mind, however, using the same reasoning to argue why he should make the trip alone. Why risk sending everyone when I can magic my way in, get the lay of the land, and get out? Doom will never know I was there. Magneto smiles down at his grandson and says, I appreciate the offer, William, but if we go, we go together. And who exactly will be leading this expedition, Magneto? Patriot asks. Magneto motions that Patriot can lead if he would like, though Hawkeye may have something to say about that. That is, if she were still speaking to him. But if not Patriot, then Magneto volunteers that they place the person with the most experience at the helm, which just so happens to be him. Not so fast, father, Quicksilver interrupts. While you're obviously the most experienced player on the field, you're no longer the most powerful. Or did you not see the news footage of your grandson magicking all of Midtown Manhattan into a coma by waving his hands? It was an accident, Wiccan mumbles. I know. Imagine the kind of damage you could do if you actually applied yourself. Perhaps even enough to frighten my father into behaving honorably for once in his life, rather than betraying us the moment he gets what he wants. Magneto tells his son once again that his only desire is to secure the safety and well-being of his daughter. But Pietro has heard it all before. This time, he hopes it's true, for Magneto's sake, because otherwise he will have to deal with Wiccan. And if he's anything like his mother, then God help him. Later, Magneto escorts the young Avengers to their rooms for the night. The accommodations may be a little rustic, but they will do. Wiccan, on the other hand, sneaks away to cast a traveling spell. I want to go to Latveria. I want to go to Latveria. His hands glow blue and a portal begins to spiral into creation when Quicksilver arrives. Billy tries to play coy, but Pietro tells his nephew that there isn't any use lying, especially when he announces his intentions every time he casts a spell. You'll find your enemies are easier to defeat if you haven't just told them what you're about to do to them, the element of surprise and all that. Pietro then tries to compliment Billy, stating that they are more alike than he first gave them credit. Wicked has now disobeyed a direct order from Magneto the moment he turned his back. To be honest, Pietro is impressed. However, Hulkling is not. He points his anger at Quicksilver, asking, How did you not get that if Doom is powerful enough to have captured the Scarlet Witch, he's not likely to be threatened by a 10th grade wizard and a guy who can run really fast? Quicksilver steps forward. May I interject? You may not. I have tried 
to be supportive of Billy's connecting with his family because God knows he supported me through the Cree scroll jamboree that was my family reunion. But you know what's even crazier than a Cree scroll jamboree? The Maximoff family! You people are every bit as toxic as I thought you'd be, but you're nowhere near as smart. You want to sneak off to Latveria without us? Please do! The less my friends and I have to do with you, or your father, or Dr. Doom, the better. But if you somehow manage to convince my idiot boyfriend to go with you, I will rip your legs off. Elsewhere, within the Avengers Tower, the mighty Avengers have brought in Simon Williams, Wonder Man, in order to help their efforts. Wonder Man, as they stand to reason, had a connection with Wanda that was stronger than anyone else's. Simon sacrificed his life to save Wanda's by absorbing the blast from a Kree ion cannon. And then, years later, Wanda brought him back to life by sheer force of will. His whole existence is the last remaining vestige of the Scarlet Witch's magic on this plane. So you thought you'd use my energy signature to try to locate her? And then what? I mean, what exactly do you plan to do with Wanda once you find her? Or haven't the mighty Avengers figured that out yet? Wolverine pops his claws and tells Simon, We're gonna kill her. Logan, Captain America snaps, but Wolverine has already started. You wanna make me the bad guy for saying it out loud, Cap? That's fine. But the last time we had this debate, we ended up as slaves in Magneto Land. The Scarlet Witch murdered our friends. She stole our lives and she took out about a million mutants. And not one of you could tell me she won't do something like that, or worse, again. So, the only permanent solution is to kill her. And if we're smart, we get rid of Wiccan too. Wonder Man looks at Captain America while pointing at Wolverine, asking, You made this guy an Avenger, Cap? Wolverine responds for Captain America, stating, What happened to you, Williams? Did the witch cast a spell on you too? Or are you still hoping she'll pick you over the robot? Cuz, from where I'm standing, the robot's looking a lot more of a man than you'll ever be. Then, you might want to take a step back and look again. Wonder Man. Having enough of Wolverine's instigations, punches Wolverine so hard he flies back into the next room, breaking the wall in the process. Captain America runs to help his teammate to his feet, but Wolverine slaps his hand away before turning his claws on even his old war buddy. Are you serious about Wanda? He snarls, because I don't think you're serious. After all, you were in love with her too. Captain America, with a cool head, tells Wolverine that the plan is to find Wanda. They will deal with the after later. But Wolverine has had enough. He formally quits from the Mighty Avengers, telling them that if he finds Wanda first, there won't be a later. Wonder Man also makes his exit after denying the Avengers offer. He tells them, there's no way I can do what you're asking me as part of a team, and certainly not a team that continues to blame the Scarlet Witch for its own mistakes. I am going to try to find her before Wolverine does, not because you asked me to, but because I owe her that much. We all do. That night, Wiccan leaves Hulkling a letter saying, Dear Teddy, you are without a doubt the best boyfriend in the entire world. You're kind. You're generous. You threaten to maim people for me. You're forgiving. At least, I hope you'll be. 
You'll be angry at first. I know I'd be angry if I did anything even remotely this stupid. But please don't worry. It's not like I'm planning to invade Latveria, confront Doctor Doom, and rescue the Scarlet Witch tonight. At least, that's not the plan. I promise there will be no castle storming whatsoever. Just a little on-site recon. Besides, Doom's palace will be so heavily guarded, I probably won't be able to get anywhere near it. However, it occurs to me that if you're reading this, something may have gone terribly wrong. Because the plan was to come back and destroy this note without your ever knowing I had gone. Which means, of course, your idiot boyfriend has probably been captured by Dr. Doom. I tell you not to risk your own safety by coming to rescue me, but I know you will anyway, because, as previously stated, you are the best boyfriend in the entire world. Wiccan teleports just above Castle Doom within Doomstop and cannot help but try to take a closer look. As he lands on the castle grounds, he is instantly surrounded by Doombots, but he isn't panicking because he can just magic himself back to Transnia. Or, since he's already there, he might as well see how far he can take this. With a cloud of blue smoke, Wiccan transforms himself into the Scarlet Witch and asks the Doombots to please escort him back to his room. For the record, Billy is not the sort of person who enjoys dressing up in his mother's clothes, but he has to say, he thinks he made quite the impression. The Doombots escort the disguised Billy to the room of the Scarlet Witch. Everything is proceeding surprisingly easy. As the Doombots close the door behind Wiccan, he transforms back to normal. He is just about to examine the room when he is grabbed from behind and thrown to the ground by his mother. Wanda stands there with her foot pinned to Wiccan's chest and asks him, Who are you? And what are you doing in my room? Billy's mind races. He wants to tell Wanda everything. That he's her son. That he's the son she thought was dead but whose soul migrated into the body of a gay Jewish fanboy. I'm, 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 I'm here to rescue you, he stammers, from Dr. Doom. Wanda's eyes widen before she squints. And how do you intend to do that? Well, in spite of the fact that you just threw me on the ground and pinned me there with your three inch heel, I'm actually kind of a superhero. Really? In training. Clearly. But I have powers in everything. Powers? Magic powers. Billy explains that he is Wiccan of the Young Avengers and they, along with Wanda's brother and father, are working together to save her. Immediately, Wanda disregards it as impossible. Wiccan fully understands that right now, Wanda is either pretending to have amnesia so she can make a new start, or she actually does have amnesia and nothing Billy is saying is going to make any sense. Either way, he needs to get her out of there as soon as possible. Wanda tells Wiccan, I appreciate your concern, but I assure you, I'm quite safe. In fact, I'm getting married tomorrow. Wiccan stops everything he is doing and asks, Your what? To whom? At that moment, Wanda's bedroom chamber door slides open. Billy barely has time to turn around when a voice answers, To me. He's fought the Fantastic Four, 
the X-Men, and the Avengers. Sometimes, all at the same time. And now, Doctor Doom is fighting Wiccan, a high school sophomore whose magic powers essentially come from wishing on stuff really hard, which, he has to admit, is insanely cool from a fan perspective, especially if he lives to tell the tale. The two sorcerers cast powerful magics against each other, blue and crimson energy battle, pushing them both apart. Dr. Doom warns Billy that he should have never come to Latveria. It may disappoint the child, but Wanda Maximoff is there on her own free will. Wiccan is adamant that Dr. Doom is putting some kind of spell on the witch. That's the only explanation. Tell her the truth, Doom. Tell her why I'm here. Tell her who she really is, a mutant sorceress known as Scarlet Witch. Wanda pleads for Doom to stop, but he insists that he is trying to protect her. He is trying to protect them all. Billy continues, You were married to a synthesoid called the Vision. You had two sons, twin boys, Thomas and William. You thought your sons were dead, but your sons are. Dr. Doom begins to overpower Wicked and tries to reason. He's talking nonsense, Wanda. I am warning you, boy. You are playing with fire. Dr. Doom's magic overtakes and burns Wicked, leaving him unconscious on the floor. He's a boy, Wanda snaps. He had no intention of harming me. Dr. Doom tells Wanda that she is too trusting. Tomorrow, she will marry the king of Latveria, a man with more enemies than allies, all of whom will become her enemy. Doom holds a hand to her cheek, saying that it's not too late to reconsider. Wanda tells Doom, If you have enemies, it is because they do not know you like I do. You saved me, Victor. You keep saving me. And after our wedding tomorrow, nothing and no one will ever come between us. Outside Doomstock, Magneto, Quicksilver, and the Young Avengers review their plan. Magneto is going to create some kind of distraction while the others try not to get caught and or killed searching the corridors of Castle Doom for Wanda and Wiccan. Then I guess Magneto gets his invasion of Latveria after all, Patriot remarks. Hawkeye grows tired. This is not an invasion, Eli. It's search and rescue. You don't have to tell me. Apparently, I do. Now, Kate hums, looking over the castle. All we need is a halfway decent distraction. In the air, Wonder Man attempts to make a call to the Avengers. Simon just realized that if they're following him, and he's pretty sure they are, the Avengers need to turn around before they provoke an international incident. Iron Man counters, telling Wonder Man that he will thank the Avengers in the end. Iron Man knows full well that Doctor Doom is not someone you want to go up against by yourself. Inside the castle, Wicked wakes up on a sofa and sees Doctor Doom standing over him, casting a spell. What are you doing to me? He asks sitting upward. Be still, boy. I'm healing you. I've no grudge against you, Wiccan. You know who I am? Of course. And I know you want what's best for Wanda. So, you'll understand when I tell you 
that what's best for her, what's best for all of us, is that she remains unaware of her past. Her powers are gone. Her mind seems to have repressed her memory and her magic to heal itself. Then how did you even find her? I didn't. She found me. She came asking for my help, petitioning me on behalf of her people. And in spite of my reluctance to aid a former enemy, I found it impossible to refuse her. Dr. Doom goes on to tell Wiccan that he is well aware of the boy's power, as well as what the Avengers will do to him if they find him in Wanda. However, Doom offers Wiccan guaranteed safety. As long as Billy agrees to come to the wedding, he may remain in Latveria free and safe as long as he wishes. The choice is Billy's. He can either be Doom's guest or his prisoner. But know this, Doom tells him. The spell I cast to heal you also relieved you of your power. Then, the ground beneath their feet begins to rumble. Outside, Magneto uses his mighty power to stop two air transport ships mid-flight and holds them in stasis. Patriot tells Magneto to think of the innocents, but Hawkeye rushes him aside, saying that they don't have time. Magneto seconds her thought, telling Patriot that he has no idea how much energy it requires to keep the ships from falling. It would be best if he put his notions to the side for the moment, at least until they rescue their friend. The team races off. Quicksilver instructs the children on what to do next. Doom's fortress can be accessed through a series of underground passageways that lead in and out of Latveria, the doors to which can only be accessed from the inside. Hawkeye and Hulkling will go with speed, leaving Patriot and Stature to team up with him. The plan will be Quicksilver and Speed will vibrate through the doors to let the others in while Vision phases in on his own in order to work around Doom's security system. Are we clear? Quicksilver asks. It doesn't take long for the responding silence to irritate him. He turns around to see the children each staring into the air. Are we even listening, children? Well, what are you all gawking at? What has my father done? Now, a shadow is casted on Pietro, and the overlooking darkness slows his speech. He turns around to find the Avengers, hovering right above him. Speed zips to him, taps Quicksilver on the shoulder, and says, Looks like you were right, Uncle Pete. We need a better plan. Inside a locked chamber, within the castle, Wiccan attempts to regain his stolen powers. I want my powers back. I want my powers back. I want my powers back. I want my... Whoa. Billy says as he sees Wanda in her bridal gown, walking into the room. She waves a key into the air, winks at the boy, and asks, You like it? It's... Perfect. It is, isn't it? Wanda tells Billy that it's all been perfect. Meeting Victor, falling in love, the king proposing to the gypsy girl. It's all been too perfect. Until Billy showed up. When Billy showed up, Victor suddenly became someone Wanda doesn't recognize anymore. So... Before she walks down the aisle with him, she asks that Billy tell her everything. Billy negotiates for his freedom 
and Wanda escorts him out of the chamber. While walking, Billy tells her the Scarlet Witch was one of the most powerful members of a team called the Avengers. She fell in love with and married another Avenger, the Vision, with whom she had twin boys, Thomas and William, until the twin souls were captured by a criminal named Master Pandemonium for his master, the demon Mephisto. But the Scarlet Witch blamed the Avengers for the loss of her kids and killed three of her teammates, destroying the team, or so it seemed, until a young hero called Iron Lad began recruiting a new generation of Avengers. A group of kids with personal connections to the Avengers, even if those connections were immediately apparent. In fact, it wasn't until Billy met a speedster named Thomas, who happened to look just like him, that he realized, I'm an idiot, Billy mumbles. The two open a passage doorway to the castle to find nothing but chaos. The Avengers, the Young Avengers, Magneto, Quicksilver, Doctor Doom, and an army of Doombots fight just in front of them, outside the castle walls. On the ground, Captain America, Luke Cage, Patriot, and Hawkeye fight back to back. Spider-Man and Speed zip through the Doombots, tripping and incapacitating every robot they can get their hands on. Vision phases through the metal men, breaking them from the inside out. Stature backhands the bots by the dozens, while Iron Man and Captain Marvel clear the air. In the center of the struggle stands Doctor Doom, blasting a bolt of crimson energy at the defending Magneto. Wiccan and Wanda stand there in shock and watch, unsure what to do next. Wiccan reaches for Wanda and tries to get her somewhere safe, but she is pushed out of his grasp as Wolverine appears and tackles her to the ground. Wolverine pops his claws, turns to Wiccan, and tells him, You've teamed up with Magneto and started a war with Doom. And I'll be damned if I know how, but you actually found the Scarlet Witch. Wolverine, stop! Wiccan calls out. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm saving the world. He then turns to Wanda. It's not personal, Wanda. Believe me, if our situation were reversed, if I were a big a threat as you, I'd expect you to do the same thing to me. Wiccan tackles Wolverine off of Wanda. He wonders how Wolverine of all people can't understand her situation. Oh, I understand. I even sympathize. But that doesn't change the fact that she wiped out an entire species with three little words. No more mutants, right, Wanda? Well, you got your wish, sweetheart. Thanks to you, there's only a few of us left. And now, Thanks to me, there's about to be one less. At that moment, Wolverine is caught by surprise and blasted by a red repulsor ray. The sneak attack overpowers Wolverine and he collapses to the ground. Both Billy and Wanda look up to see Iron Lad hovering just a few feet away. I'm back, Billy, he says and I'm here to protect you. The future depends on it. There are Avengers, Young Avengers, and former Avengers, staging what looks like an invasion of Latveria. There is Doctor Doom and Magneto trying to kill each other. And they've got Wolverine flying through the air backwards. The two shield-wielding heroes, Captain America and Patriot, 
Watch as the Clawed Crusader soars through the air. Where did he come from? The two ask each other. More importantly, who is powerful enough to do that to Wolverine? That would be me, Iron Lad claims as he glides through the battle. He then turns his attention to Cassie Lang. Stature, your scale makes you a target. Stand down. I'll catch you. Stature returns to regular size and falls into Iron Lad's arms. Nathaniel, what are you doing here? How can you even be here? And how long can you stay? Can you tell I'm excited to see you? The feelings entirely mutual. Stature giggles in excitement and asks for Iron Lad to fill her in on everything. It's a long story. It involves time travel. I was monitoring the time stream, and I couldn't help but notice that you guys could use a hand. At that moment, Iron Lad, while still holding Stature in one arm, uses his free hand to generate twin containment fields to capture both Doctor Doom and Magneto. They won't last long, but they'll buy everyone enough time to get out of there. Iron Lad Nathaniel Richards is a kid from the 30th century, and he grows up to become King the Conqueror. Although every day he struggles to fight off that destiny. His intervention in this battle should, in theory, change nothing. With the majority of the team now assembled, Hulkling asks if anyone has seen Wiccan. Iron Lad claims that he had previously seen both Wiccan and the Scarlet Witch outside the city walls, but after Speed does a quick search around the perimeter, paired with the cursing of Magneto for the location of Doctor Doom, the children realize Wiccan and Wanda are missing. Elsewhere, Wiccan screams in pain as the chaos magic is siphoned from his body by Doctor Doom. Wanda begs him to stop but Doctor Doom keeps his clenched fist raised in the air. Apparently, he's more than just a child, even without his powers. Wiccan still managed to escape his cell, contact his allies, and kidnap you. He didn't do any of that. I'm the one who freed him. Wanda steps in front of Wiccan, resulting in Doom ceasing his action. Wiccan's body collapses to the ground, unconscious. Wanda continues, The boy traveled halfway around the world and risked his life looking for me. I had to find out why. The shadows from his hood and the metal mask on his face cannot hide Dr. Doom's squinting eyes. And did you? He asks. He told me his story, yes. And do you believe him? Do I believe that I'm an all-powerful sorceress who lost her children and murdered her friends? No, Victor. But the real question is, why are you so afraid I believe such a story? Before he can respond, he is attacked by a combination of magnetic, kinetic, and repulsor energy. Magneto bellows his name as he moves the very ground beneath Doom's feet. With the heroes and Dr. Doom now preoccupied, Billy drags Wanda away in an attempt to find somewhere safe. Some place where no one will try to capture her, or kill her, or marry her. That's when they run into the Young Avengers. Wiccan is so happy to see his friends, he almost doesn't care that Hulkling is about to yell at him right now. Speed approaches Wiccan and Wanda slowly stating, I can't believe you actually found the Scarlet Witch. The two correct Speed, telling him and the rest of the team that she is not 
the Scarlet Witch. She's Wanda Maximoff. She has no memory and no powers to speak of. And neither does Wiccan. For the moment. That is why, when the team sees Doctor Doom, Quicksilver, Magneto, and the Avengers closing in on them, they quickly accept Iron Lad's assistance. The young Avengers disappear within a flash of crimson temporal light, leaving the others behind. Doom calls out Wanda's name before turning his frustrations on Magneto and Quicksilver. I was trying to save her from you. Doom scans over to the Avengers. From all of you. And now, because of you, the most powerful force in the universe has been unleashed into the time stream where she can rewrite the past or the future just as easily as she said the words, no more mutants. God help us all. Elsewhere, within the time stream, Iron Lad asks, where to now? Stature tells Iron Lad that she thinks he already knows. Cassie! Hawkeye tries to speak up, but Stature won't hear it. Stature tells Kate and the others that if they are going to undo this, they need to start from the beginning, the day the Scarlet Witch brought Jack of Hearts back from the dead, the day she killed Cassie's father. So, Wanda can remember, of course. Wanda surprisingly thinks that this is a good idea. If seeing the past does help her remember, maybe she could set things right. Hawkeye speaks up once again. They've learned the hard way that once you start messing with the past, things get ugly. Iron Lad tells Kate that they actually wouldn't be changing the past. He's developed a new technology, which would allow them to inhabit a moment in time without altering it. It will be like no one ever knew they were there. The Young Avengers touch down at the front steps of the Avengers Mansion. Wanda looks across the area, scanning the statues and architecture, but still, she can't say that she remembers. Cassie tells Wanda that it's okay. It's possible she just needs time to reacquaint herself with the environment. Cassie then turns to Iron Lad, telling him, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done, Nathaniel. Yes, Vision says, making sure to keep himself within close proximity to Cassie. We're all very fortunate you showed up. How long will you be staying? Vision asks through a forced smile. Barring any unforeseen complications, I don't see any reason why I couldn't rejoin the team permanently. If you'll have me, Cassie. Of course we will. What wonderful news, Vision says for her. Oh, speaking of wonderful news, now that Wanda Maximoff is alive and well, I suppose that means you're married. Iron Lad sneers while keeping his focus on Cassie. According to my research, the Vision and the Scarlet Witch never actually divorced. So, I guess congratulations are in order. Vision nervously looks to Cassie and tries to explain that the Scarlet Witch was married to the former Vision, not him. But Cassie is sidetracked when she sees her father, Scott Lang, the Ant-Man, walking right out the mansion. Cassie drops everything she's doing and runs towards her father. Hawkeye tries to stop her, but Iron Lad tells Hawkeye that it doesn't matter Cassie can see her father, but he can't see her. A scowl grows on Hawkeye's face as they all watch Ant-Man hug his daughter within his arms. In my defense, Iron Lad chuckles, 
It is new technology. The minute I power back up, I'll get us out of here, Kate. I promise. On the front steps, Cassie continues to embrace her father. What are you doing here, sweetheart? Scott asks her. Everything okay? It is now, she tells him gleefully. Aren't you supposed to be at your mom's today? And what are you wearing? And who are your friends? They're from school. We're dressing up as young Avengers for Halloween. And I promised them a tour of the mansion. So you want to introduce me? You have no idea how much. Cassie walks her father down the steps to her friends, and Iron Lad meets them halfway. This is Nathaniel! It's a pleasure to finally meet you, sir. Iron Lad smiles. That's a pretty impressive get-up, young man. They all are. Though, I have to say, the Jack of Hearts costume is in poor taste. Oh no! Cassie gasps. That is is Jack of Hearts. That's impossible. Jack's dead, Scott reasons to his daughter, still examining the walking corpse of his fallen friend. Nathaniel, get us out of here, now, Cassie orders. I need a moment to get my power levels back up. We don't have a moment. Cassie, her father asks, now becoming worried. What's going on? Scott continues to ask for an update, but his daughter tells him that there isn't any time. Jack of Hearts is about to explode. And if they stay where they are now, there is no doubt that they will all die. Cassie gathers the team as quickly as possible and all the heroes sprint in the opposite direction of Jack. All of them, except for Wanda. She slowly steps one foot after the next, towards the walking corpse. Oh my god, she mutters. Jack. Why are you doing this? Jack asks her. Dirt and clumps of dried skin fall off his body as he reaches for her. Please, Wanda, don't make me do this. The young Avengers Watch as Wanda approaches Jack of Hearts, just out of earshot of what words are being said. Cassie tells them all once again that they need to go. Not without Wanda, Wiccan tells her. At that moment, Speed races forward and grabs Wanda before returning her to the group. Only seconds before, Jack of Hearts detonates and brings the Avengers Mansion crashing to the ground. There is a blinding flash of white light, and the Young Avengers are each brought down to their knees. What just happened? Ant-Man asks. I'm trying to find out, Iron Lad tells him. Jack of Hearts exploded, Cassie mumbles. But Jack of Hearts is dead. He is now, that's for sure. But, Dad, the important thing is, you're alive. If that's true, then why is there an Ant-Man memorial in the Statuary Garden? That is an excellent question, and one that I'm hoping Iron Lad will be able to answer. According to my chronometer, we've returned to your original timeline, Cass where your father is still dead, though I have no idea why. Excuse me? Scott asks, bewildered. Patriot interjects, stating that this is happening because Iron Lad is a time traveler who refuses to learn from the past. Or maybe he doesn't remember what happened the last time he changed history. Iron Lad sticks up for himself, stating the last time he changed history, he stopped Wolverine from killing Billy and Wanda. For that matter, 
Patriot didn't seem to have a problem with that. And besides, his power levels still haven't recharged. So, there isn't any way he could have brought them back. Then who did? Patriot asks. That's when a gust of wind blows by as Wanda, in her full Scarlet Witch outfit, floats down from the sky, telling the team, I did. She remembers. They call her the Scarlet Witch. Her husband, the Vision, him and her had twin sons, Thomas and William. Two lost souls she made flesh and blood using magic. Two lost souls she was forced to set free. And for that, she blamed the Avengers. She wanted the Avengers to experience loss. She wanted them to face the sins of their past the way she had to face hers. So, she confronted them with their failures, their addictions, their mistakes. A fleet of Kree warships seeking revenge for the Kree Shi'ar War and an army of Ultron robots. And now, it's all happening again, thanks to the Young Avengers. The children and Scott turn from watching Wanda float in the air to see Hawkeye, Jessica Jones, and the Beast standing in the entrance of the mansion. Jessica tells Clint, you've got to give the kids credit. They at least found her when no one else could. Both Hawkeye and the Beast raise an eyebrow. That's not entirely true, Beast tells Jessica. You found her too? Hawkeye asks, amazed. In Transnia, we had tea. Oh, same here. We had uh, tea too. Jessica whips her head in Hawkeye's direction. Oh my god, Clint, you had sex with her? Hey, can we focus on the impending catastrophe here? The Kree, the Ultrons, the Scarlet Witch. Hawkeye wonders to the others why none of their enemies have started trying to kill them yet. But that's when Jessica notices Scott Lang standing next to his daughter. Scott Lang? Back from the dead, apparently. But how? Jessica gives Scott a hug. They keep trying to explain it to me, but I'm just happy to be here. Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, explains that they just so happened to take an unexpected detour into the time stream and accidentally ended up altering the course of history. Again, Clint asks her, was that before or after you started the war in Latveria? After, Kate tells him. Thanks for asking. Scott and Clint both admit that the situation is pretty surreal. They both died that day in the past, but somehow they're standing right on the front steps of the mansion together, watching Wanda relive all of her memories. Wiccan informs the others that when they found Wanda, she was suffering from amnesia. The Wanda in Transnia was actually a Doombot. Jessica jabs Clint in the side with her elbow. Dr. Doom replaced the real Wanda with a Doombot so that he could marry her, which would have happened if Iron Lad didn't stop by and give her a tour of her past. At that moment, they notice the Ultrons and the Kree aren't aiming at the Avengers. They're aiming at Wanda. From what Jessica can tell, Wanda is trying to kill herself. Kate and Clint both draw their bows. Kate tells the rest, I don't know if we can stop her, but we can sure as hell distract her. I'm way ahead of you, Hawkeye, Speed says as he begins taking out the Ultron clones. Call me that again, and I'll use you for target practice. 
I don't know. I kind of like Hockett, Clint tells her. You would. Now, all we have to do is take out the magical Kree warships. Believe it or not, I happen to have some expertise doing that. How many explosive arrows you got on you? Not enough. Then it's a good thing that there are two Hawkeyes in this world. I can't tell you how relieved I am to hear you say that. Wicked, still without his powers, asks Hulkling to fly him up to speak with Wanda. I am not flying you up there, and she does not look like she's in the mood to talk. Beast asks Wicked where his powers are, and Hulkling answers, he lost them the last time he did something I told him not to do. Wiccan ignores his boyfriend and turns to Stature. Cassie, will you take me? Scott asks, how can Cassie take you? At that moment, Cassie begins to grow more than two stories tall. Actually, Dad, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I used to borrow your pin particles when you weren't looking. And by borrow, I mean steal. Are you mad? Scott's eyes glow bright as he watches his daughter. Mad? Are you kidding? My daughter's a superhero. Jessica chimes. She's a good one, too. So I guess it runs in the family. Cassie lifts Billy up into the air. Upon closer inspection, Billy notices that Wanda looks like she is being possessed, like some outside force is controlling her. Billy? Cassie asks him. What if the Avengers were right about her? Billy lowers his head. You mean that she's too powerful? That she needs to be put down? Billy's eyes return to Wanda. They said the same thing about me. Cass. As the two approach, Wanda warns them, begs them not to come any closer. Her friends, her husband, her children are all dead because of her. Wiccan urges her to listen. Your friends are alive. Your husband is alive. Sort of. And I know this may be hard to believe, but... I think your children are too. What? How else do you explain identical twin boys named William and Thomas who happen to have magic and super speed? You mean that's what this has been about? That's why you started a war with Doom? That's why you've awakened this power in me. Because you thought, maybe, somehow, I might be your mother? You are, Wiccan defends himself. I know you are. Use your powers. They'll tell you whether or not I'm your son. As the two become closer, a scarlet feedback of magic briefly causes Billy to glow red as his powers are returned to him. He begins to examine his body as he hears Wanda say, I'm sorry, Billy. You mean, what kind of mother doesn't even recognize her own son? Wanda holds Billy in her arms. Tears begin to flow from both of their eyes. Forgive me, she tells him. There's nothing to forgive, he tells her. She smirks and replies, There's quite a lot, I'm afraid. Both Billy and Wanda float to the ground, and the first thing Billy wants to do is reintroduce Wanda to Thomas. Tommy, I know that you don't believe in any of this, but it's not that I don't believe it, Speed interrupts. It's that I don't see the point, because even if she is our mother, or whatever, it doesn't change anything. She betrayed her friends. She murdered people. She almost wiped out an entire race. And she's going to have to pay for all that. Which means, now that we've found her, she's just going to disappear again. So, what was the point? 
The point is, Wanda tells him, you were doing your job when you came looking for me. You brought a known criminal to justice. But more than that, you've given me a chance to see what extraordinary men you've become. I only wish I were worthy of you. Hawkeye makes a call to Iron Man and the other Avengers. They, as well as Quicksilver and Magneto, are at least half an hour away. Quicksilver interrupts the call, asking, How is she? Is she alright? I must speak with my sister at once. What's that noise? Hawkeye asks. Iron Man tells him, That's just the noise Pietro makes right before he's tossed out the airlock. Any update on the kids? Hawkeye informs the rest of the team that Wanda and the children are at the mansion, and they brought Scott Lang with them. Tony orders Hawkeye to make sure that they stay there. No one must leave the compound, no matter what it takes. Clint tells the others what Iron Man told him, and Speed immediately believes that the Avengers are on their way to kill Wanda. Wanda, for one, believes that this is what she deserves for everything she's done. The Beast, however, raises the question, what if she undoes it? In a moment of psychological instability, Wanda said the three words that robbed nearly every mutant on the planet, and perhaps even the Omniverse, of his or her mutant abilities. No more mutants. Three words which cast a spell that can only be reversed by Wanda. It's risky, of course, but in theory, it might just work. Each former mutant would be given the choice, of course. They just have to find one who is willing to conduct the test. So, when the question is asked, who do they know who's desperate and or stupid enough to be their former mutant guinea pig? The answer is simple. Jamie Madrox and X Factor. Jessica Jones personally summoned Jamie Madrox, the multiple man, Shatterstar, Strong Guy, and Richter to the mansion. Jamie admits that he and the rest of X Factor are desperate enough to volunteer, but they have to ask, why them? Jessica snaps at Jamie as if he didn't already know the answer. Because, Madrox, when you decided to cut into my PI business by starting X Factor Investigations, you told me your clients were mostly former mutants who were hiring you to find out why they were suddenly former mutants. Jamie isn't convinced. As far as he is concerned, who is to say that the Avengers aren't just trying to round up more people to do even more damage? Citing that this is the exact same thing that Quicksilver, of all people, said to them when he showed up asking for help. Quicksilver claimed he could give people their powers back too. Turns out, he was doing it with stolen Terrigen crystals. And it almost worked for a while until the mutants Quicksilver restored couldn't take the strain on their bodies anymore and they exploded. Wanda tries to reason that she won't be using any Terrigen crystals and she won't be casting any new spells. The only thing she'll be doing is trying to reverse what's already been done. Jamie stops her right there. He can already tell her that it won't work because the minute Wanda shows her face outside, the minute the mutant community hears that she's alive and that she was the one responsible for M-Day, they're going to tear Wanda limb from limb. And Jamie can't blame them either. So, he tells her, good luck finding any mutants who will be able to keep from killing her long enough for her to cure them. But that's when Richter volunteers. Immediately, Multiple Man, Strong Guy, and Richter's boyfriend, Shatterstar, all tell him to reconsider. 
But Richter explains that he's tired of being a third-rate detective who gets his ass kicked every time they go up against anybody with powers. Which is all the time, by the way. He just wants his powers back. He was born with the power to move mountains, literally. Before, his connection to the earth was like breathing. And now, he feels like he's been holding his breath for a very long time. Shatterstar concedes, turning to Wanda and warning the witch that if anything happens to Richter, he will not hesitate to kill her. Wanda smiles weakly and tells Shatterstar that she wouldn't have it any other way. She places both hands on Richter and within seconds, the whole room is illuminated with her magic. Spiraling scarlet energy consumes the area and Richter lets out a yell in pain. Both Shatterstar and Wiccan attempt to release Richter from Wanda's grasp, but the connection is too strong. Then, with a bang, the scarlet energy explodes, throwing Richter to the floor. Suddenly, the ground beneath their feet begins to rumble. Everyone in the building attempts to regain their footing, but before anyone has any time to adjust, the rumbling stops. At first, everyone thought the shaking was Wanda's doing. To their surprise, Richter smiles and tells the rest of them that it was him. The tremor was him. Whatever Wanda did, it worked. His powers are back. Shatterstar kneels down and hugs Richter and multiple man congratulates Wanda, saying, that's one down, only a million more to go. A million former mutants that Wanda will need to find and convert. A daunting task, yes, but Strong Guy suggests that maybe she should ask the X-Men to let her borrow Cerebra. That is, if they don't kill her first. At that moment, Cyclops, Storm, Emma Frost, Iceman, Rogue, Gambit, and Colossus touch down right outside the Avengers Mansion, each of them carrying a serious scowl across their faces. Certainly not the friendliest looking crowd, notes Jamie. So, what's the plan then? My plan, Wanda tells the others, is to give the X-Men what they want. More mutants. Richter's powers are restored. However, there is no need to thank Wanda. Multiple Man reminds everyone She's the one who took his powers away in the first place. Now, all Wanda has to do is convince the X-Men to allow her to restore all the other depowered mutants, which will be easier said than done, because the X-Men are angry, justifiably so, and they're afraid of what else Wanda might do. Unfortunately, it isn't only the X-Men that waits for Wanda and the others. The Avengers Quinjet arrives and a flock of heroes fly out the air vehicle. The first to speak is Captain America. He steps right towards Cyclops and asks, Is this a social call? Scott, because now really isn't the best. Cyclops cuts him off, firmly stating, you know why we're here, Captain. The Scarlet Witch is responsible for the genocide of the mutant race, and she will be brought to justice. Captain America stares Cyclops right in the visor. The red energy glimmers behind the screen. Yes, she will. 
he says, but not today, and not by you. Whatever she's done, the Scarlet Witch was an Avenger, and we take care of our own. Magneto tries to interject by telling the two heroes that this doesn't have to become a turf war. Both teams can work together with Wanda to ensure that STAY OUT OF THIS ERIC. Cyclops points his finger at Magneto as a warning. Scott, listen, I trusted you, and I've done nothing to betray that trust. You use the Young Avengers to go after Wanda when I specifically asked you not to. You did nothing of the kind. I'm warning you, Magneto. Cyclops' visor now begins to glow even brighter. But before anything else can be said, a mighty earthquake breaks apart the ground beneath their feet. All the Avengers and the X-Men scan the area to pinpoint the origin of the attack. They find Richter and the rest of X-Factor. The young Avengers, Scott Lang, Jessica Jones, The Beast, and Hawkeye, all escorting Wanda out of the building. Pietro is the first one to approach his sister. Quicksilver hugs the Scarlet Witch, squeezing her tight and letting out a sigh of relief. Sister! They are going to kill you, so when I give you the signal we run, are you ready? Wanda chuckles softly and tells her brother, then again to her father, she will not be running. And they must promise to let her go without a fight. Not even father would make a promise that empty, Pietro scoffs. The Scarlet Witch then turns to Captain America, telling him that she wants to take full responsibility for what she has done. But she's begging that before they imprison her or destroy her or whatever they're going to do, they just let her alleviate the suffering that she has already caused. This enrages Cyclops. He fires an optic blast that shatters the already fractured rubble at the Avengers' feet. He snarls. The Avengers don't get to negotiate on behalf of mutant kind. The Scarlet Witch is coming with us. The X-Men will hold her accountable for her crimes. Magneto asks him directly, What is wrong with you, Scott? You're better than this. You have every right to your anger, but you cannot afford to act on it. I hate to say this, but right now, you're behaving like me. And I wouldn't wish my mistakes on anyone, least of all you. The X-Men didn't come here to make things right. They came here for payback. And they shall have it, Wanda tells her father. She refuses to be the source of any future conflict. She willingly chooses to go with the X-Men. Say goodbye, Magneto, Cyclops orders. Wanda, I beg you. Before Magneto can finish his sentence, Cyclops attacks. At once, all the X-Men follow suit. Emma Frost attacks Wonder Man's mind in order to keep him off the playing field. Colossus attacks Luke Cage. Iceman stalls Quicksilver as Rogue clashes with Miss Marvel. In the sky, Storm summits powerful lightning to overload Iron Man's armor. Captain America tries to convince Wolverine to try to reason with Cyclops, but it isn't worth Logan's time. He aims his sights directly for Wanda. Hawkeye, Beast, Jessica Jones and the Young Avengers stare in disbelief. 
Kate Bishop motions the team leave while they still can. Wiccan refuses. I have to tell Cyclops that this is my fault. Wiccan runs into the battle and his brother Speed follows closely after him until the White Queen arrives to pry inside their minds. She asks the two fine young mutants if they would like to become X-Men. All they have to do is go along with Auntie Emma. And of course, they can't refuse. Wanda sees her children being manipulated and immediately acts. One by one, she casts a hex on all the heroes in the vicinity. She tried to stay calm through all of this. She tried to accept things as they are, to keep her emotions in check, to remain in control. Because they all know what happens when she loses control. So, if the Avengers and the X-Men are going to act like children, then she thinks it may be best if they take a nap. Everyone, except her and the Young Avengers, pass out and fall to the ground. However, they will wake up eventually. And no doubt, they will be at each other's throats again. Wanda casts another spell that surrounds the group with her scarlet energy before teleporting them back to Castle Doom. You've come back, Dr. Doom says simply, as both him and the Scarlet Witch begin to hold each other close. This is naturally cause for some concern for the children. Just because the Scarlet Witch took out the Avengers and the X-Men, and then immediately ran back into the arms of Doctor Doom, that doesn't necessarily mean they're pitting the two teams against each other and plotting to take over the world, does it? What it means, Wanda explains, is that what she must do, she can't do on her own. And Victor, as she calls him, is the only one who can help. She trusts him. He has only ever acted in her best interests, if only because Doom knows that if he betrayed Wanda, she has the power to simply wish him out of existence. We need allies now, and Victor has been an ally from the start, an unlikely one, I'll admit. From the start? Billy asks. When did this start? I'm asking because one day, for some reason, your magic powers suddenly got amped up into reality-altering powers. You committed crimes the Scarlet Witch would never have been capable of. But Doom would. Wanda explains that it was never Doom. It was always her plan. In the past, when she learned of her son's deaths, Wanda became desperate and sought Victor's help in bringing them back to life. Doom was her enemy, but his magics were more powerful than hers, or Doctor Strange's, and he was certainly less conflicted when it came to practicing the darker arts. And, to Wanda's surprise, he agreed to help her. Since Wanda is a Nexus being, a living focal point for Earth's mystical energies, they were able to combine their magics to access and capture the life force itself. The only power that could give her back her sons. But they were naive to think the life force could be so easily manipulated. It possessed Wanda and transformed her into an entity with reality-shaping abilities of a god. The forces unleashed that day could not be controlled and resulted in the crimes Wiccan described. It wasn't until months later that Doom's scouts 
found Wada living in Transnia, with no memory of who she was or what she had done. Doom had no intention of telling Wanda the truth. He couldn't risk losing her. He couldn't help but imagine what Wanda and he might have accomplished if they learned to control the life force. But those who attempt to control the power become consumed by it. Wanda pleads for Doom to try one last time. After that, when they succeed, he will have the power to divorce her from her abilities once and for all. Patriot once again speaks up, voicing his opinion. I'm sorry, but he's Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom doesn't keep his promises. Dr. Doom is not a good guy. You know why? Because he's Dr. Doom. You think he's just going to give all that power back? He's not. He's going to keep it. And then we'll all be living in the world of D, which is short for doom, which should give you some kind of idea what it's going to be like to live in his world. Wanda appreciates Isaiah's candor, but doubles down that she has no other option Isaiah saw what happened at the mansion. The Avengers and the X-Men were seconds away from destroying them all before she had the chance to even explain her plan, let alone execute it. They could arrive at any second, and then Wanda might never get the chance to save the mutant race. So, again, she shares his concern. But she has to do this now, before it's too late. Wanda summons Wiccan to join in as well as oversee Doom while the enchantment is cast. The three of them join hands and once again the room is consumed by scarlet energy. Isaiah again argues that the young Avengers need to stop this. They cannot put the fate of the mutant race in the hands of Dr. Doom. Stature refuses to help. So does Hulkling. Hawkeye just thinks it's a vain effort. There's no way they, in their condition, can stop three superpowered magicians. We don't have to stop them, Patriot explains. We just have to stall them long enough for the Avengers and the X-Men to get there and figure things out. Because they're always so calm and rational, Speed scoffs. Patriot scans the other heroes. An incendiary arrow might do the trick. It might also kill them, Kate snaps. But Isaiah doesn't listen. He snatches Kate's bow and arrow, aims it, and fires it at Dr. Doom. The arrow zips across the room, and instead of hitting Doom, it plants itself right into Wanda's abdomen. Wanda falls to the ground and begins to writhe in pain as she bleeds out. Wiccan gasps and runs to aid his mother. He desperately casts a spell to heal her. It takes more time than he wants, but he succeeds. Patriot also rushes to Wanda's side. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was trying to stop the spell. Wanda's eyes widen and she pats herself down. The spell. I never completed the spell. But the power. The life force. I can't feel it anymore. It's gone. The mutants. I can't help them now. Suddenly, a gold glow begins to radiate from on high. Speed is the first to notice, and then the rest turn to inspect the origin of the light. Patriot holds up his shield to aid his vision, and a small piece of shrapnel falls from the ceiling. It bounces off his shield 
and clinks as it hits the ground. The heroes examine the piece of fallen debris and realize it's a mask. Their eyes raise back to the sky and they see Doctor Doom without his mask for the first time. But he bears no burns or scars. His face is repaired, fully realized to his former glory. Victor is here, he says piously, and I am going to take care of everything. Dr. Doom is dead. Victor Von Doom has been reborn, restored and transformed by the reality-altering power of the life force itself. Of course, he has Wanda to thank. Dr. Doom lowers himself to the floor so that Wanda and the Young Avengers may bask in his luminescence. The power to alter reality is, by its very nature, unstable. And Doom promises to Wanda, to everyone, that he shall not abuse it. He will devote his life to redressing the wrong he has done, to atoning for his sins, and to earning a place for himself among the heroes of this world. Doom vows to make the planet free of poverty, disease, and war, peacefully governed by Victor Von Doom and his wife, Wanda Maximoff. With no other real choice, Patriot steps forward and begs Dr. Doom to try and give the mutants back their powers. I'm sorry, Patriot, but I cannot undo a spell cast by another. I can, however, cast new ones. And I assure you, the mutants will lack for nothing in the new world. They will have everything they need, everything they desire. Except their freedom, Hawkeye says flatly. A benevolent dictator is still a dictator. The Scarlet Witch interrupts, reasoning. I think what Kate is trying to say. Kate said what she was trying to say. My point is, Victor, however noble your intentions, this power of yours will not be contained, at least not for long. It corrupted me. Dr. Doom reasons to Wanda that her spirit was not strong enough to conquer the life force because her soul is too gentle. His, as they both know, is not. The life force will accept him. Moreover, the world will accept him. At this point, the Avengers and the X-Men are no threat to him. They have already shown that, left to their own devices, they will destroy themselves and each other. The young. Avengers, however, Dr. Doom places a hand on both Wiccan and Speed's shoulders, have demonstrated nothing but bravery to each other and the woman I love. It is my hope we can become a family, and with your permission, I would very much like to ask your mother to be my wife. Will you marry me, Wanda? Yes, if you rid yourself of this power and put it back where it belongs, I will marry you. And if not, you'll what? 
side with the Avengers and the X-Men against me. That is, if they don't kill you first. Victor, you are dealing with forces you cannot control. No, I am dealing with forces you could not control. Victor waves his hand, and instantly, Wanda and the children are transported back to the mansion. You've made your choice. Now, you must find a way to live with it. The young Avengers bicker amongst themselves to try to figure out what to do. Iron Lad suggests they leave, hide in the time stream to come up with a plan. Vision objects, stating that the more Iron Lad messes with the time stream, the more and more he will slip into becoming Kang the Conqueror. Cassie seconds Vision's statement, first thanking Nathaniel for everything he's done to help, saving her, saving her father, but her place is in this time, with Vision. Wanda, however, sides with Nathaniel. If the children can hide, she can buy them enough time to fix this and restore the balance of power. But Isaiah refuses, stating that this is his fault. He shot the arrow that disrupted the spell that allowed Dr. Doom to siphon the energy. He did this. So, he is going to stop Doom or die trying. Next is Billy. If anyone deserves the blame, it's him. He tells the others. At this point, Speed and Hulkling have had enough of the pity party. They order everyone to get their heads back in the game before it's too late. At that moment, Wanda's eyes roll back and she collapses to the ground. The kids look up to see Emma Frost, the White Queen, standing triumphantly. The kids demand that Emma tells them what she just did. The same thing she did to me. I've taken her off the grid, as it were, so she can't use those pesky reality-altering powers of hers. Wiccan and Speed explain to Emma and the others as they wake up that Wanda doesn't have those powers anymore. Doom does. Emma kneels down and scans Wanda's mind, only to find that everything the children are saying is true. Wanda no longer has the power to restore the mutants, and Doom has all the power, which suggests that perhaps Doom was responsible for Wanda's crimes. The Scarlet Witch admitted her guilt, and she will be brought to justice, Cyclops snarls. Speed steps forward and asks, What does that even mean? Are you going to put her in mutant jail? Are you going to torture her? Kill her? Torture her and then kill her? Would that be enough justice for you? Well, what's your plan, Mr. Summers? When you came here for the Scarlet Witch, what exactly were you planning to do with her? Put her on trial for crimes she's already confessed to? For killing three people who are now alive. For turning a million mutants into human beings. Cyclops doubles down. Mutants died. Hundreds of mutants died. Because the Scarlet Witch stole their powers. And hundreds more died trying to get them back. Ask your Uncle Pietro about that. So, what am I supposed to do, Speed? Welcome Wanda back and say, it's okay, I know you didn't mean it. You can be an Avenger again, and we'll just pretend you didn't destroy 
millions of lives. Yes, Billy stands for to defend his brother and his mother. After all, Magneto's killed untold thousands, and you made him an X-Man. Miss Frost was the queen of the Hellfire Club and a murderer. Rogue was a terrorist for the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Gambit was a member of the Thieves Guild. And Wonder Man, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Quicksilver, and the Vision all started out on the wrong side of the law. But I personally can't imagine the Avengers without them. And how many times has one of you been possessed by an evil spirit? or mind controlled and forced to do things you would never do, to hurt people, to kill people, even people you loved. I'm not saying you should pretend it never happened, but I do think you should look at the whole picture. Whatever her crimes, Wanda Maximoff has saved lives and saved the world more times than we probably even know. She has proven herself again and again to be a hero. And what happened to her is bound to happen to every single one of us someday, if it hasn't already. The question is, how do you want to be treated when it happens to you? With compassion booms a voice from above. The heroes look into the air and see Victor in all his glory. After all, Wanda was trying to save her son's lives when she was possessed by the power of creation itself. The power to make and unmake reality. The power that I now possess. But have no fear, for I intend to use it to heal. First, he awakens Wanda from her slumber. Then, Victor shatters Cyclops' visor and repairs the damage in Cyclops' brain that hindered his control over his powers. Not only that, he cures the beast. Cyclops can't help but wonder aloud if Victor really has the power to give all the mutants back their abilities. Victor simply states, I can do anything, Mr. Summers. I can make the blind see. I can cure the afflicted. And, if need be, I can raise the dead. Victor waves his hands and conjures the images of many of the hero's fallen allies. He then tightens his hand into a fist and the images fade away into the air. I can give you everything you've ever wished for or nothing at all. It's up to you. Cyclops' vision is returned to its natural state and the beast's fur grows back as thick and as blue as ever. The two examine each other before returning their attention to Victor. Ultimately, Cyclops refuses the offer. He speaks for everyone when he says he will never surrender to Doctor Doom. Victor's eyes begin to glow as his anger peaks. His body expands to grow until he is over five stories tall. You may resist if you wish, if your pride demands it, but you won't win. Even the power of the Beyonder was nothing compared to that of the life force, and those who resist it will surely perish. So, will you accept my offer, or will you fight and die? 
all the heroes, Avengers, and X-Men alike leap into battle against their now omnipotent enemy. The young Avengers, Scott Lang and Wanda stay back as they try to figure out how to fight an all-powerful doom. Wanda, knowing more than most, tells everyone that Victor may feel like a god, but he's still a man. And unless he puts the power back where it belongs, it will consume and destroy him. Unfortunately, the only way to take the power back from Victor is for both Wanda and Billy to reopen the life force portal. In theory, they could absorb enough of the life force to at least make this a fair fight. The problem is, once they reopen the portal, Victor will sense it. They need a distraction. Scott is the first to ask, what can be more of a distraction than two super teams fighting at the same time? I am. His daughter Cassie steps forward. If I can grow to Doom's height, I can do this. I know I can. Vision and then Iron Lad volunteer to back her up. No way, Scott tells them. You kids stay put. I'll distract Doom while Wanda and Wiccan start casting that spell. Ant-Man shrinks down, catches a ride on a nearby ant, and then starts to fly away. Scott flies straight into Victor's ear canal. After a few moments, Doom reels back in pain. His wails in agony echo throughout all of Manhattan. Ant-Man then tries to make a swift exit, but is spotted. Doom claps both his hands around the hero, successfully swatting him out of the air like you would a common housefly. Dad! Stature gasps before immediately growing to match the size of Dr. Doom. You killed him! She screams as she uppercuts Victor. He falls backwards and collapses into a number of buildings standing behind him. They crumble to the ground under the weight of his fall. Victor tries to stand to his feet, but Stature tackles him back down. And I can just as easily do the same to you, child. So, I suggest you reign in this tantrum of yours before I lose my temper. Doom projects an unbelievable amount of life force energy. It overwhelms Cassie, burning her and sending her flying in the opposite direction. The young Avengers see their ally fall, and Speed and Hulkling are the first to run in to her aid. Now, Wanda and Billy have an opportunity to open the portal. The two grab a hold of each other's hands and their magics intertwine. Wanda begs her son to go along with what she does next. Once the portal is open, Wanda asks Billy to run as far away from her as he can. With magic, there is always a price to be paid. And if anyone pays, it must be her. At that moment, they hear a familiar cackle. Victor begins to shine brighter than ever before. The heat expelling off him, now too much for some of the heroes to withstand. Too much for even Victor to withstand. His skin begins to burn. It breaks and chips apart like small ashes from a flame. I should thank you. By opening the portal, you've only given me more power, more illumination, more white light flooding my soul, making my mind one with the creators, burning away my sins, my imperfections. Victor, let it go, Wanda pleads, 
It's killing you! I will not be corrupted. I am not weak. Like you. Dr. Doom collapses to the ground. His skin singed. His cloak returned to its natural shade. You're hurt. Wanda approaches him. Get away from me, woman. But I'm... You are nothing. A nexus creature. A conduit to power. That's all you are. That's all you've ever been. He hides his face. You think you were powerful enough to destroy the Avengers and rid the world of its mutants? That was me. That was doom. You don't know what you're saying. Let me help you, please. Help me? You can't even help yourself. You're as weak, as trusting, and as easily led as your so-called friends. I'll leave you to them. Perhaps they'll even save me the trouble in having to kill you. Dr. Doom teleports away. Wanda tries to call after him, but Captain America stops her, telling her that her powers are needed elsewhere. Some time passes, and Scott Lang is the last one back on his feet. He groans himself awake, and it is not until he hears someone mumble his name that he actually gets up. He sees the crowd of heroes, his family, and friends, all standing in a circle around someone. His stomach sinks. He runs up to the crowd and pushes his way to the center of the group. Oh my god. The father falls to his knees. Cassie. Cassie Lang has died. Her father, Scott Lang, the Ant-Man, falls to his knees before crawling forward to hold his daughter's lifeless body. Tears pour from his eyes. Between his sobs, he begs for someone to explain how it happened. The young Avengers explain that when Doom attacked Scott, Cassie thought Doom killed him. She saved them. She saved all of them. It was supposed to be me, not her. Scott cries. It's not too late to save her. Iron Lad tries to reason that they can take her into the time stream right now, Scott and him, and find a doctor in the future that can help Cassie. I can save her. I can bring her back. You just have to trust me, Mr. Lang. I know how painful this must be for you, but if you let me take her, I promise I will do everything in my power to help. Vision interrupts Iron Lad, saying he will do nothing. Cassie is gone, and Nathaniel must leave her in peace. With her father, Iron Lad grits his teeth. You mean I should leave her with you? Iron Lad shoots forward like a bullet before hitting Vision with a fully charged left haymaker. You are nothing! He yells at the Synthesoid. Wiccan, Speed, and Patriot attempt to hold Iron Lad back, to speak some sense into him, but he cannot hear his friends over his own fury. Nothing but a machine! A machine with my brain patterns! Iron Lad fires repulsor blast after repulsor blast, each one hitting their mark. Each one, together, burn apart Vision's costume and synthetic skin. 
If Cassie had any love for you, Vision, it was because you were a carbon copy of me. You wouldn't even exist if I hadn't programmed you, if I hadn't built you. So know this, I could take you apart just as easily. With one last blast of energy, Vision's body breaks apart and falls to the ground, burning with flames now erupting from his body like a furnace. You killed him! Hawkeye gasps. You killed the Vision! Iron Lad stands over the fire. He doesn't look when he replies. You can't kill something that was never alive to begin with. Nathaniel, fix him right now! You fix him if you want. I'm leaving, and I'm taking Cassie with me. Captain America now steps forward, telling Iron Lad that he isn't taking Cassie anywhere. I am trying to save her life. You're the ones that killed her. The, the way you went after the Scarlet Witch. The way you went after Wiccan. At the mention of his name, Billy speaks up, telling Nathaniel that he knows that isn't true. Why are you defending them, Billy? They're terrified of you and what you can do. And if you think they're going to just let the Young Avengers even exist after this, you're deluding yourself. Iron Lad opens up a portal, a spiraling energy. Our only hope for any kind of future is the time stream. We can find Cassie in the past and make sure this never happens to her. Wiccan responds, Nathaniel, don't you see? This is the moment. If you run away to the past and start changing the future, this is the moment you become Kang the Conqueror. Iron Lad scowls at Wiccan before leaving into the portal, alone. You underestimate me, Billy. I'm going to be better than Kang the Conqueror. Much better. You'll see. A number of the heroes still surrounding wonder aloud if they should follow Iron Lad. If they even could, if they tried. It isn't him you want. Wanda mumbles. Currently, she's kneeled down within the circle of heroes paying her last respects to the vision. It's me. And me, chimes Billy. And me, seconds Tommy. Both of them admitting to being just as culpable as their mother. Which is to say, not at all, Magneto reminds the group. Doom is to blame for all of this. M-Day, Cassie's death. He said so himself, reasons Pietro. Cyclops waits a moment before saying his piece. Even in the unlikely event that Doom was telling the truth, and the Scarlet Witch was possessed by a force she couldn't control, it doesn't change the fact that she destroyed lives. And for that, there is no punishment severe enough. But the children were right. There is no justice to be had. Even her death would accomplish nothing. Better she should spend what's left of her life trying to make up for what she's done, knowing it will never be enough. Knowing she will never be forgiven. Knowing I will end her myself when it happens again. Because it will happen again. The X-Men depart. Cyclops' words shake Wanda to the core. Captain America sees her standing alone, lost in thought and reminds her, once an Avenger, always an Avenger. He offers her a place to stay at the mansion, but Wanda refuses. 
She doesn't believe she has a place anywhere at the moment. To this, Multiple Man jokes that the minute the heroes find themselves in a magic war against Dormammu or Mephisto, Wanda will be back on the team. Hell, they'll probably put her in charge. X-Factor then makes their leave. Simon Williams, Wonder Man, approaches Wanda and gives her a hug. He asks her what she's going to do now, but she has no idea. If she were to ask him, she's better off without the Avengers. The Avengers used to be a family. Now, it's an army and one Wanda doesn't want any part of. Simon then sees Magneto and Quicksilver approaching. He decides to lead Wanda to her real family. But before he leaves, he reminds Wanda that if she needs anything at all, she knows where to find him. Magneto and Quicksilver, of course, argue over whom Wanda should go with. Pietro believes that he should take care of his sister. Magneto, on the other hand, believes they should go somewhere as a family. Wanda refuses, telling the two, Thank you both, but I need a life of my own before I can take a holiday from it. I've only ever been Pietro's twin, Magneto's daughter, and the Vision's wife. It's time for me to take responsibility for myself and be there for my children. Days pass, and the young Avengers find themselves sitting on a pair of city benches. The recent events are still weighing heavy on each of their minds. So, what do we do now? asks Tommy, before answering himself. We repair the vision. How? Teddy wonders. What do you mean, hell? We got timed backups of his hard drive. Yeah, but his body was 30th century tech. There's no way to replace it. So, we'll ask Tony Stark to build us a new vision with the old vision's memories. The young old vision. Our old vision. I don't think Tony Stark's going to be in the mood to do any favors for us for a while. So, we'll have to do something amazing to get the Avengers to forgive us. And then, we can bring the vision back. Kate raises her head. Even if we could, I don't know if we should. Think about it. All of his hard drive backups are from before. What are we going to do? Bring him back to life only to tell him that Cassie's dead? That would be cruel. And I can't help hoping maybe he and Cassie are together right now. What, wherever they are. And they deserve to rest in peace. So they're both just gone. And we just... We're just going to go on without them? No, Eli says. He stands to his feet. I'm not anyway. A million mutants would have gotten their powers back if it weren't for me. I've made too many mistakes. And I'm 17. I'm only going to make more. But I swear to God. I will never allow my mistakes to hurt anyone else ever again. So I'm through being Patriot. And tomorrow, I'm moving to Scottsdale to live with my mom. That's a mistake, Tommy comments. He's made up his mind, you guys. Kate mumbles supportively. And you're just gonna let him go? Teddy asks. Tears forming Kate's eyes. What choice do I have? My best friend died. The Vision died. Iron Lad murdered him 
on a mission I was supposed to be leading. I'm not like you guys. I have no powers, no ties to the Avengers, and no right to be doing this. So, I'm done. So am I, says Billy. The Avengers were right about me. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know enough now to stop doing it. I'm sorry. Apology not accepted, spits Tommy. This is a war we're fighting. And yes, people get hurt. People die. But you don't stop fighting or the bad guys win. I don't know who the bad guys are anymore. The Avengers thought it was Wanda. I thought it was the Avengers. Eli thought it was Doom. But it turned out to be me. I'm the bad guy, and I have no business calling myself a young Avenger. Tommy speeds off and finds a place to sit on a nearby staircase. Kate, Eli, and Billy slowly walk in order to catch up. Teddy picks up his pace and reaches Tommy quicker than the rest. And you're okay with this? Tommy asks him. I understand it so the young avengers are just you and me just you i am not going out there and doing this all by myself you don't have to you could have an actual life for a change be a person learn to slow down sounds like hell tommy scoffs you never know you might actually enjoy it. Have you met me? I give this whole retirement thing a week, two weeks at the most. Teddy places a hand on Tommy's shoulder, telling him, Between you and me, I hope you're right. And that was it. The Young Avengers didn't suit up for a while. Not for muggers purse snatchers, or any petty crimes down the street. Not for national disasters. Not when all of Manhattan broke out in an epidemic, turning it into Spider Island. Not when the Sentinels attacked and man declared war on mutants. Not when the Human Torch came back to life. Not for months. Billy is undoubtedly doing the worst of the group. The day comes when Teddy tries to snap some sense into him. Enough is enough. I've tried to be patient and supportive, but you need to talk to me or to Wanda or to someone right now. No, I take that back. You need to talk to me. I'm sorry. You should be. Because if I've learned nothing else from all this, I know now that life is way too short for you to be sitting here wasting yours and mine. Are you breaking up with me? And give you another reason to sit in the dark doing nothing? Sorry, Kaplan. You're stuck with me. Till death do us part. Billy looks up. Teddy Altman, did you just propose to me? Depends. Are you going to get off your ass and do something? The two share a moment. But before they can move forward, there is a soft tapping at their window. The boys are honestly surprised when they find none other than Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, hovering just outside, claiming to have a message from Cap. She needs the two of them to put on their uniforms and head to the mansion now. Billy and Teddy get to the mansion and see that Tommy and Kate are suited up and waiting for their arrival. The four enter the building together and are greeted 
by Captain America and Iron Man. Captain America walks the children to the statue garden, telling them, Thank you for coming on such short notice. The reason you're here tonight is because we need your help. You found the Scarlet Witch when we couldn't. You stopped Doctor Doom when we couldn't. You somehow managed to defuse our conflict with the X-Men. So, we've asked you here to let you know from this day forward, whether you're Young Avengers or not, in our eyes, you are and always will be Avengers. In the beginning, nobody knew what to make of them. Seven super-powered Avengers fans who came together because the Avengers had fallen apart. Now, there are four of them, and they've fallen apart. Billy has no idea what will happen to them, but maybe that's the point. That there are no guarantees. There are no happy endings. But you show up anyway. You don't give up. You never give up. Maybe that's what it takes to be a hero. <laughs>